Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freak, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, E.T., from weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. Lots to talk about this week in weather. Let's get right to it. In this issue, we'll talk about the Ohio Valley snow, which is developing now, then the one more blast of winter cold, and then why the cold pattern is going to break down, it looks like, for a while. Uh, upper Midwest snowstorm here looks like uh, developing for November 25th, mild the eastern United States. And then a, a cold pattern here for uh, mid-December, May looks like it might be returning. So let's get right to it. This here is a current pattern here as of, as of Sunday. We'll call up our market here. We show some features. This here is your ridge on your west coast. So that's your uh, positive p a right there. You see that. Okay. And um, we have one short wave here and another one here. And these two features are going to swing through and produce the uh, Arctic blast and the snow, which is coming for the Ohio Valley, the rain for the East Coast, and the cold air behind it. A very, very weak uh, negative NEO, which is going to Scandinavia, breaking down. But what's more important is look at the strong jet developing here across the Central Pacific. And that's going to slam and head to the West Coast and change the pattern over the next 7 to 10 days. You see our current map, and we can see not very impressive. Really, this is just a wave of low pressure developing over Alabama. And then the first Arctic front you can see here uh, over uh, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, the first really strong cold front is here, and the second one is the Arctic front is there. Um, and there's our snow in this area here, and you can see the areas of rain all in this area as such. So not a very impressive looking map, but definitely a snow event. Here's the latest radar. This is as of uh, 6 p.m. this evening, and we can see the moderate snow there over East Central uh, Illinois and Central Indiana, Northwest Ohio. Uh, also, this is WSI, a different shot from the WSI, the regional radar. And you can see, again, moderate snow in some areas, light snow in other areas. It's not a big snow event by any stretch of imagination, but, you know, Toledo's going to get good snow out of it. Finley, uh, Columbus, Dayton, uh, you know, Blue, uh, uh, Indianapolis, uh, Muncie, uh, Lafayette. Uh, they're all going to see good snow. And then into southeastern and east central uh, Illinois as well. Mount Vernon, Effingham, places like that, Decatur, they're going to see decent snow out of it. Uh, so uh, very nice uh, feature developing here. And then rain, as you can see, in West Virginia, Kentucky, most of Kentucky, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at the different uh, models here in terms of what they're showing for the snow, uh, this is the high-resolution HRR model, which uh, at the, uh, I guess this is the 22Z one, so this is the 5 p.m. run. And you can see it's got decent snow. Uh, this shows for the next uh, 15 uh, hours of total snowfall. And if you look, you see this light blue stuff here. That light was around 4 or 5 inches of snow in here. This uh, dark green blue line here that's three inches that's the three inch line right there so it's got two inches close to indianapolis a little more to the south also good snow in far north uh central uh kentucky there louisville other models don't have that you'll see as you'll see here in a second uh this here is the hrr um uh, one kilometer snow rain reflectivity and again this is a valid as of um Monday morning, you can see the rain snow line here is over eastern Ohio. It's north of Pittsburgh as well. And a lot of Ohio is seeing a decent uh, snow here, as is uh, north central Kentucky. Now, if we look at the actual snow amounts, high resolution again, you can see, uh, again, the uh, three-inch line here, which is this dark blue versus green stuff uh, right there. That's the three-inch line right in here. So, and then this is like f uh, five inches in here and here and here, which is all very reasonable. There's Indianapolis right on the edge of it. Uh, here's you know Dayton, Cincinnati, Louisville. So again, this got more snow in northern Kentucky than a lot of other models do. Uh, and then it passes north of Pittsburgh, as you can see. And this here is the early uh, early Sunday morning four kilometer NAM WRF with snow totals in the next 60 hours. Uh, notice less snow in, in, in portions of Kentucky. So a little bit of snow there, decent uh, a few inches here in north central Kentucky, right in this area here, as you can see. But notice the purple. That's like around six inches in here. And then this light blue stuff, that's uh, three, four inches in here. And much of Indiana and Ohio. So it's a little different there. Let me clear this out. And then the next one here is the GFS uh, from early this morning and early Sunday morning. You can see, again, notice so the light purple there. That's four or five inches of snow in places, uh, maybe even six, in uh, far north central Kentucky, western and southwestern Ohio, and eastern and east central Indianapolis. And then heavy lake effect snow up there in uh, northwest Pennsylvania, southwest New York State. And this is the high-resolution GFS. Also, again, the purple area, 5, 6 inches. Also, uh, portions of Kentucky. That's going to be a very tough call as to 
what portions of Kentucky is going to see three, five, four, five inches of snow, and who's going to see one or two inches. And then also, uh, the GFS uh, has the uh, three-inch snow line. It looks like just to the south of Indianapolis on there, but much of Ohio gets a pretty good, decent snow out of it for the first one of the season, really. Now, this is the ARW, which is a bad, not a very good model. It has the really high snow amounts. Uh, if you notice here, you see this little orange blob here. Let me call it up for you. This model has... That's a blob of theirs, like, what's that, 12 inches, 13 inches? That's ridiculous. That's just nonsense. So uh, I just disregard it. A uh, much better one here is uh, this. This is not the uh, a NAM model. Let me change this. This is incorrect. That's not what this is. This is the NNM model. And this is not bad for them in terms of the worst-case scenario. As you can see right here, it has, uh, notice the uh, purple areas in here. This is about... Seven, eight inches, nine inches. That's the worst case scenario. That would be really surprised if that were to happen. But that's probably the top of the line scenario. I don't think that's going to happen at all. As you see, my winter forecast, as you saw on the Facebook page, is vastly different from that. I have this general three to six inch band as the worst case scenario, and I think I'm going to stick with that. I don't see any reason to fudge one way or the other with one inch. Now, this is the map here for day four. We can see the Arctic blast is now moving through uh, the eastern U.S. You can see that very nicely here. Okay, but again, look at this howling Pacific jet streaking across the Pacific, coming in this way. The NAO is now going back towards Scandinavia. Let me change this. There we go. And advance the map. Uh, there we go. And look at our temperatures here for, I guess this is for early uh, Wednesday morning. It's not quite the coldest morning uh, of the day, coldest part of the day, as you can see, but already 23 in central Virginia. Uh, and it's teens in the Appalachian Mountains, up and down teens in most of Pennsylvania, western New York State, Ohio, eastern Kentucky, northeastern Tennessee, Indianapolis, uh, much of Illinois, and single digits, and I guess even near zero in Wisconsin. So very impressive cold snap coming through here, no doubt about that. Here's our temperature anomalies relative to normal. No reason to argue against that from the 12-kilometer dam. And now finally by day five, here's a new pattern developing. The cold blast has now moved off the coast. And what do we see? Um, this feature here, this enhanced ridge, let me point this out to you right now so you can see this. This, see this ridge here? This is being fed by the El Nino, which is down here. It's warming up. The, all the El Nino regions are warming up, and that energy is building this ridge in here. Now, as the Aleutian Low, which was out here last week, is now moving in towards the Aleutian Islands, what's happening is this is all tightening up. You see these lines tightening up in here? And that's producing a strong Pacific jet, which is slamming into the West Coast. So that's why this is important. This is a typical El Nino late November-December pattern, when the warming El Nino causes the ridge north of and over Alaska to enhance and then you get compression and a strong Pacific jet. Now this is from the European model from the early Friday morning and the Friday afternoon model. Uh, this is a notice here, um, early Friday right here, and then this is 12Z Friday. And both of them have the high moving off the coast, as you can see, and the strong south winds up and down the east coast, east of the Mississippi River, and here's the low, and that's a snowstorm for the upper Midwest. It's a rainstorm east of the Mississippi River. This is the 12Z, Friday, 12Z Sunday run, same sort of thing. Look at the highs off the coast, strong south winds coming up and down the coast here. And I, you know this is just a rain pattern, no doubt about it. Look at these 850 temperatures here, plus 10 as far north as New York City and Chicago. That's temperatures well up in the 50s to near 60 degrees. And the uh, slow goes from Texas, uh, maybe Amarillo, Texas, to St. Louis. That's a pretty big snowstorm track for Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. So this is definitely looking like a snowstorm event the day before, or two days before Thanksgiving. This is an enlargement of the same map, but you can see, again, there's no 50-50 low. The ridge is off, is off the west coast and the eastern Pacific. There's so many things against this from being an east coast winter storm. Now this here is the uh, large-scale map at the day 9, and you can see... Uh, this is a valid November 25th. Why this is an East Coast, not an East Coast event at all. Um, and you can see the mean trough is right here in the Midwest. And uh, we have a Southeast Ridge there. There's no 50-50 low. The NAO is going back to Scandinavia. And look at this howling Pacific jet. Look at these lines coming in like this. Wow. That's very strong stuff, folks. Okay. Uh, beyond that, this is the European Ensemble. Look what the low is. Chicago. It has the rain snow line in northern Michigan, for Pete's sake, and almost by Montreal. This is a rainy event for everybody east of the Mississippi River. Okay? All right. 
And now this next map here, let me, here we go, uh, this shows us our teleconnections or patterns here taking us in the second half of November. And we can see that the uh, PNA is very positive right now, but it lowers towards uh, the end of the month, towards neutral. The NAO is slightly negative, and then slightly positive, and slightly negative, not much there. The WPO goes negative, neutral, and the EPO goes negative, then essentially neutral as we go out in time. And if we look at the different maps here, the teleconnections, this is the European uh, ensemble here. Um, the NEO, and you can see that while the, it has a pretty strong signal for the rest of the month for a negative uh, NEO, as you can see right in here, uh, showing some sort of negative NEO. And these dark greens here, that's uh, minus 1, minus 1 1.5. And this here is the Arctic Oscillation, and again, strong signal uh, for a negative Arctic Oscillation. Nothing overpowering, but definitely there. But if you look at the different... Uh, 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 other products and indications here. Now, this is the uh, PSD uh, or the reforecast uh, GFS. It uses a more coarse version of the GFS, but the advantage of it is also based upon climatology, and they've corrected the bias errors out of it. So, um, it's another version of the GFS, which is often very good for picking up long range patterns. And here, the NAO, as you can see, um, is negative all the way through. And then finally, as we get to day 10, and day 14 it goes positive as you can see here this next one is the PNA and again it stays constantly positive all the way through beginning to drop off a little bit in day 10 and day 14 this is the Western Pacific oscillation which is negative all the way through to day 7 and then goes neutral day 10 and day 14 and then the EPO saw go which is negative goes positive quite positive by the end of the month and of course that means a warming pattern when you have a positive EPO now if you look at these uh, again this is from the European this agrees with this the European is consistently showing uh, either neutral positive uh, Western Pacific oscillation here and then also look at the strong signal here for a positive EPO during the uh, Thanksgiving period and beyond so uh, again that means a warming pattern for a lot of areas east of the Mississippi River now here's the CFS which takes us um, into uh, the end of, uh, yeah, the first week of December, actually, and it's showing a very zonal pattern. Uh, no amplification here. There's no ridge on the West Coast. We have a vortex way up here. There's no NAO. It's just a constant Pacific flow of energy right across, just constant, just like this, not doing anything. So um, it's a fairly mild-looking pattern. Look at our temperatures. That's a warm pattern, mild pattern, not a blowtorch, a couple of degrees above normal, but it's a mild early December pattern. Uh, week four, we see a little bit of cooling. Uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, going into the 20, uh, this is December 6th to December 11th. And if we look at our CF, uh, excuse me, our MJO patterns, and this tells us something else. Now, this is another way of forecasting by the MJO here, the Maddie and Julian oscillation. Now, this here is the MJO. You can see it's right here. It's in zone one. All right, so it's right now. It's in zone one, and this is as of um, and this is as of November 15th. You can see latest date in here. So it's in zone one. Now, what happens is that the models move this around to different phases. Now, here is the European model, which takes us, as you can see, into phase right here, phase three. Okay. Now, the uh, British model, I think that's the one I have next. Uh, now, this is a GFS ensemble, has it in phase two. And by November 22nd, the uh, British model has it in phase two, about to go into phase three. Now, the new experimental uh, by Kyle McRitchie of the uh, CFS MJO has it also going to phase three, but by mid December goes into phase four and before Christmas, phase five. So we can use that to figure out, you know, if it is that strong and the MJO holds together, doesn't fall apart, what does that mean for the pattern? Well, this is the MJO for uh, phase four November and going in then into December as well. And you can see in here, phase four, um, in terms of our. Uh, uh, heights we have a bit of a low here okay and then we have a ridge here on the west coast a little bit and then off the southeastern coast so it's not a very impressive pattern here uh, and if you look at the temperature uh, patterns this is a uh, uh, rather innocuous doesn't not a strong signal one way or the other and now we forget to phase five in late November early December um, what we're getting is a big trough of the west, east coast, the ridge on the west coast, and the pattern is beginning to turn, and you can see that here. And we look at our temperatures, we'll see the cold pattern returning. Look at that, cold pattern temperatures east of the Mississippi River once again by the middle of December. So uh, not at all a surprise. And finally, if we look at the CFS, uh, again, this is the Sunday run. Uh, this is uh, September, this is as of December 14th. We begin to see uh, the cold pattern returning. 
uh, which makes sense. We're getting a ridge here on the west coast. I uh, have a 500 low here in southeastern Canada. We're getting a bit of a cold flow this way. Again, nothing to write home to mom about, but certainly colder than it's going to be in the first week of December. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.